Good afternoon and welcome to A Moment in the Word. We are indeed uh, delighted to have you with us today. And I moved my work uh, and I'll grab that in just a second. Uh, we're going to get into our uh, lesson for today. We want you to get your Bibles out. We're going to be going to Revelations 21, verses 1 through 8. Pardon me just a moment. Let me get my word. Okay, I removed all my material and pushing things out of the way and didn't keep that right near me. Uh, Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 through 8. This is going to be an interesting discussion. We won't get into the uh, depths of Revelation, but this is uh, a passage that I think we all can kind of relate to and see what God is doing in our lives. We are all looking forward to <clears throat> what God has in store for us. And sometimes we get caught up in not really understanding uh, what this whole journey of life is all about. So we need to take a moment to go back and take a look at some things so that we'll understand. And let's see, is that where I really want to go? Yes, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Revelation 21, 1 through 8. And we want to give a shout out to uh, all of those uh, that are helping out and participating in the uh, United Elite Basketball um, Tournament that's put on for in uh, regards to my nephew who passed away uh, several years ago, uh, eight years ago, I believe it was. Yes, at the age of nine, he and two other young boys in Augusta, Georgia, in a car accident. And uh, they've been doing a, uh, my sister-in-law, Frankie Simon, she's been doing, and along with Coach Warren, United Elite Basketball, they've been doing a basketball tournament every year, and they are out working on that today. Uh, also, they had a banquet last night, uh, which uh, two students received scholarships. And so many great things have been going on in that regard, and we want to give a shout out to all of those working so diligent in, in that process here in Augusta, Georgia. Um, so, Revelation 21. <clears throat> and also give a shout out to my daughter-in-law, uh, Nasa, for celebrating her birthday today. God bless you. God bless you. The Word of God says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen. And so our lesson today that we get into today is entitled, God's opening act. <clears throat> God's opening act. And I titled this, um, I was looking at uh, expanding that title, but uh, I want to ask you a question. Are you ready for God's opening act or will you fall subject to God's closing act? You know, an opening act starts to play out. And if you look at this text, you might wonder, well, this is Revelation. This is the end. 
Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit. It's, it's really the beginning. It's God's opening act for the rest of our lives. And so as we look into this text, uh, it starts off saying, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And this is John. He's John the Revelator. He's giving his uh, testimony to what he has seen as he was caught up into the heavens. And he saw all of these things that the Lord revealed to him in Revelation. But this is uh, uh, something interesting. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there is no more sea. And so we, we see that, and we all know, we're all looking forward to that great day when we get to get to heaven, and we all uh, live and shout and have a, a great time to see our Lord and our Savior. But look at what it says. It says there's a new heaven and a new earth. So first of all, we know that life, the way it is now, where we are now, will no, no longer be in existence. And we, we kind of understand that uh, because the first heaven and the first earth were done away with. Because now God is creating a situation where mankind will live eternally with him. And so we don't have to worry about sin and all the things that go along with that death and dying, sorrow, pain, agony. Uh, we won't have to worry about all of that because sin is no longer there. And so what are you looking forward to? Because we can really get down to it and see towards the end, and I, I'm, I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself and deal with that, uh, as far as what the end will be. And we have a choice. We all have to make a choice as to where we're going to spend eternity. He says, uh, but look at this, he says, and there was no more sea. And, and this is just uh, from my standpoint of looking at it and nothing uh, philosophical or theological to, to, to wrangle with. But he says there's no more sea. And, and what I see in that is that there's nothing that's going to divide us from each other. We'll all be together. Uh, oceans separate continents. Uh, we have all sorts of things that are occurring in society that separate us from one another. Uh, race, religion, and ethnicity, culture, and all of that. But there's no, nothing separating us. Now, uh, and we know that uh, our bodies require water. We don't drink water from the ocean, but uh, that's, that's not the point here uh, because there is going to be a river that flows through. And we won't, we won't hunger and we won't thirst anymore. But the, the key thing for me is, again, that there's be nothing that's going to separate us where I live over here and you live way over there and we can't get to each other. We're the fellowship of the believers, the fellowship of those that, with, that are with God is going to be continuous and there's going to be uh, no designation of that country versus this country and all of those things. Um, and so there's nothing that will separate us. And so John describes this, this new city that he sees coming down out of heaven um, from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And we know that wedding ceremonies are such that um, People uh, really go out and spend a lot for the wedding. Uh, and the main thing is that the bride, the attention is all on the bride. And the husband is waiting for his bride to appear. And he sees her coming down. And, and how uh, the, the attitude and the atmosphere just changes when the bride walks in. And that's the way it would be when God creates the new heaven and the new earth. And this holy city of Jerusalem comes down and we'll all be dwelling there together. And so the key, uh, another key point there in verse three is saying that he says, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. That's, that's worth celebrating right there. The tabernacle of God is with men. And so uh, where are you going to spend your eternity? This is God's opening act to the rest of our lives, our eternal existence. And we are all waiting for that to occur. Uh, we can't wait for, to be in this new heaven and this new earth. Uh, but here again, John says in verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. There's not going to be anyone saying there's, a God doesn't exist in heaven. 
because all creation, everything that is created, number one, it was created by God. God created it for his own pleasure, but he also created things good for our pleasure and our existence. But what did we do? We made a decision, mankind, to listen to the evil, excuse me, to listen to the evil one. And so we've gotten wrapped up in some things. And so that's what this whole thing of salvation is all about. That when we get to the new heaven and new earth, we don't have to worry about those things anymore. We have a new body. We have new clothing. We'll have a new mind. We'll have a new home. Everything will be new. And we can thank God for that. And God will be with us. The fact that God is with us, uh, isn't that what Emmanuel meant? When Jesus came into the world, he said his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And isn't it good to be in that place where not only is God with us now, because when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have the Holy Spirit with us and dwelling in us. And so uh, we've already been given the gift of salvation. We just have to accept it uh, through Jesus Christ. And, and God is with us, but God is with us even more when we're there uh, in that, that holy city, in that new Jerusalem. And so I'm not going to go through each verse here because there's a lot to consider in all of this. Uh, I found it interesting uh, when it talks about the uh, the river that runs through it uh, and all of that, and I think that's over in verse 22. Uh, but um, verse 6, I have to be able to pick up that. He said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. The water of life. And so we are looking forward to that time when we can uh, revel with uh, eternal life and, and deal and revere the things that, that God has given to us and deal with life in a new, new form, in a new fashion. So it, now it gets down to the meat of where we are. Verses 7 and 8. Because this is all about God's opening act for our eternity. So again, are you looking forward to God's opening act or God's closing act? Because God's closing act will come upon those that are going to be cast into the lake of fire. Look at what it says. Verses 7 and 8. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now don't get caught up in the son part of the male-female because this is dealing with it from the standpoint of mankind. And so if you're going to be his son, you're, you're his child, you're his, his, his son or daughter. And then there's nothing intentional to say women aren't going to be in heaven. Okay? All right. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable, <laughs> abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brim brimstone, which is the second death. Those of us who trust and believe in Jesus Christ will only die once. Those who do not, those who refuse, those who continue to live in sin, and those who continue to profess that there is no God, and, and all the other things that they may want to say, and that they want to deal with and, and say that if God was loving, he wouldn't allow this to happen. No, God has given us the opportunity to get things right. But he says, if you want to continue in that, this is what you have. This is God's closing act. And God's closing act is uh, the second death. That mankind, no, he won't be dead, but he, the torture and the torment is like going through, is dying every second because you're going to be burning in the lake of fire. And when a body burns, it destroys the body and the body's dead. But these persons will be living eternally and burning and just going through torments. That's why it describes it as weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because mankind would want to die, but they can't. And that place is only, that place of torment really was only designed for Satan and his followers. And his fall, the fallen angels that went with him. It was not designed for man to be. But guess what? Because man decides that uh, 
he wants to do what he wants to do, that we can uh, get away with these things and live a life that we want to live and not worry about what God has to say about it. And that the word of God, you know, you you folks that speak, uh, spewing all of these, these Bible verses at me, you Bible thumpers, you, you Christians, or you're always this, you're always that. God is saying, no, don't get caught up in what man tells you you have to do. Read it for yourself. Read God's word. Understand that if you trust and believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that he came to redeem mankind back to a right relationship with God, that God will give us eternal life. And that's, all, that's, that's what's required. Now, when you do that, because you are a believer, then you're going to live and walk by the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, you're going to stumble and fall and make mistakes along the way, but you're going to ask God for forgiveness. You're going to try to get, make things right with your fellow man. You're going to love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and you're going to love your neighbor as yourself. Focus on those things and then watch and see your life turn around. You can be a part of God's opening act, or you can be a God, part of God's closing act. I choose to be a part of God's opening act, where I will live with him eternally in this new heaven and the new earth, in this new city of Jerusalem that comes down. There'll be no separation, there'll be no division, there'll be no hunger, there'll be no more thirst, there'll be no more agony. And that's what I'm looking forward to. God bless you. God keep you. We hope you join us on tomorrow uh, where we plan to be here for our uh, uh, worship experience at the 10 o'clock hour Central Standard Time, 11 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. And we just hope and pray that you'll be with us and share in God's word. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. Amen.